All right, here we go. Podcasting time. Colin Thomas is here from We Will Fix It and Essential Maintenance Dubai. We're talking fixing stuff. We're talking what's on our mind. We're talking DIY. Anything else we're talking about? Yeah, relaxation. Oh, man. (sighs) We just started (laughs) pre-recording with that, didn't we? (sighs) I think that's the... You know, it's, it's the different things you can do to find that relaxation. Yeah, absolutely. And it might be DIY. Yeah, definitely. It is for me, that's for sure. You know, I was, I was trimming trees yesterday. In fact, the, the day we got back from our vacation, literally the day we got back, went and opened up the shed, got out some pruner, pruners. Didn't you, weren't you supposed to be buying some hedge trimmers? I did. I haven't bought them yet. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Black and Decker people, you only need the basic ones and they work. Yeah, I know. I have not gotten them, so I've got to do that. But I was just trimming some suckers off the tree mm. around the door, and it, it was just like put on the gloves, got out some some tools. I was like, okay, yeah, this is. This it's is time good. when your mind's not on anything. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Apart from if you're hitting the nail, make sure your mind's on. Oh that. man, what did, what did I have an issue with? And it's and I looked at it and I was like, oh man, I gotta I gotta fix this. Well. I, or I need to get Hamza in to fix. I don't know. It's, oh, it's not it's really a, a key lo- issue. Well, it's not. It's more of a door handle issue. So it's probably no, not. You know, I'm sure that that's his his area because it's mm. connected with the key. But it's on an outside gate, and you know those those handles that come across those white handles on. The oh, I know this. Yeah, and it, it seems to be getting loose. So I'm thinking. No, you don't for that. That's a standard. Okay. And um, the spring on that one is actually mounted to the handle uh, and not the mechanism. Ah. So, oh, actually, no, there may be another one in the mechanism. Yeah, but this, this is old. This is an oldie but goldie, so. Yeah, but no, it will, uh-huh. work, it will work both ways. So there'll be one spring in the mechanism itself and another spring in that handle. Okay. That handle is standard. Ah. And when you pull off, so there's a cover that goes over right, the top I, of I, it. You know what? I pulled off the yeah. cover and, and I took a the look. two screws that are there. So here's a problem. The screw holes seem to have miraculously got the holes that are in the door seem to have gotten larger yeah, than these elongated screws. yeah that's yeah, normal. yeah yeah and so uh, that's kind of a problem no it's <laughs> not. okay so what no, do i just do? use little stubbies so oh, um yeah. the wider and then again if a worst case scenario it doesn't fit through the hole in the actual handle itself yeah. um just grab a um a standard steel drill yeah. and um drill it out okay you've you got the space there to be able yeah, to do okay. that okay. that's standard on aluminium gates yeah. you know that happens all the time the other thing that you so can i can do, just go to the the hardware store over in satwa or by my house and get a new handle yeah okay. really really easy right. yeah the, 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 those little stores are ideal take one side of it with you okay. uh, without a doubt and um yeah they'll they'll just literally if they haven't got it they'll go off and two minutes later miraculously yeah, it will arrive <laughs> Still don't know how they do it. I think that they must have this enormous, like, five-kilometre warehouse. Because it doesn't matter what I do. They've got more stock than Amazon. And this shop is probably about nine foot by nine foot. You know, tiny. It's smaller than my shed, and that's saying something. Yeah. And, um, and bless them. I, I mean, it's cavernous. N- never have I been let down. Oh, man, okay. It's quite amazing. Well, uh, that's, a, that's an easy one, then. So all I need to do is, one, take the handle with me, go yes. to the store. Two... Get a little wider aluminum screws, yeah, little stubbies. Take, take your screws with you as well. And say, okay, I need something the bigger. The third one on that that sometimes happens is if it um, if the screw hole has pulled towards you uh-huh. with the, the gate as well, yeah. you can actually just hammer it flat, oh, uh, okay. which helps as well. Fourth one, if you... Th- now, this is a little bit bodgy, just to let you know, James, <laughs> but um, when in trouble. Um, if you uh, put Teflon tape around the original screw... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. And then screw it. Uh-huh. It will grip. But there is a question mark over timing, yeah, as in how long it will last. Oh, that's a good idea. If you want to get really bodgy, really, <laughs> really bodgy here, then um, you know the um, you know the putty that you can get that's um, uh, basically you heat up in your hand yeah, and then yeah. it goes solid. Yeah, yeah. Get the steel stuff for that, or if they have an aluminium version, and then put it on the threads of the screw oh. and screw it as you go. And that, will hold for years. Oh, there we go. That I, I like that. That's a, I don't normally give bodge tips. <laughs> you never I'm, do. This, I know, this I'm is... totally anti-bodging. <laughs> but. but I had that incident happen <laughs> with about two weeks to go on a rental property, and that's how I got around it. Okay. I have to have it in stock. Yeah. So on that basis. All right. Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a, I, I've sort of got it going. I put a, what did I do? I, I bodged it myself just to get me through while I yeah. thought about what to do. Mm. And I just put some stoppers into it and it'll work. You know, some like some, 
plugs that you use when you're doing your wall work. Yeah. And, and that sort of has got it into a place. But I noticed the handle does a lot of play right now. So mm. I think it... Uh, Sorry, the play, when you say play, do you mean that there was a lot of downwards action uh-huh. before anything actually happens? Yeah. No, that's mechanism. Oh. It's okay. not handle. All right. So that's on the inside. How do you get at the mechanism? Uh, should be two screws. Uh, again, you may well have a cover plate uh, yeah. but on the uh, the end plate of the of the gate itself. Uh-huh. Yeah, you should have sure. a couple of screws there, uh, the cover plate off, and a couple of screws that again are screwing into uh, aluminium. And then, obviously, handle comes off with crossbar, and yeah, then yeah. it should come straight out. And again, you you know you could take that, and it will be standard if it's working with those standard handles. Okay. So you should just take that to the little shop in Satwa, and um, oh, okay. Mister Bigger Than Amazon will <laughs> disappear and come back. And again, right. it should be an easy fit as long as you can get light for light, which okay. normally they can. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is take a look at the whole thing. Make sure it's not somehow pop riveted in yeah and shouldn't be and then give it a go and mm. worst case scenario I, I call the guys to come and fix it right yeah <laughs> it's that. absolute worst case yeah it's it'd be yeah it'd be um see on that one i would send pictures to hamza on that okay and if you didn't um because i used to have a really good aluminium shop yeah. for all this kind of stuff and then they just turned rubbish. Oh, no. Yeah, it's one of what, those. What happened? They lost all their staff? And I think it was a staff issue, yeah. Because yeah. that tends to be a big issue with some places. Like, I, yeah. I've had some of the, some of the repair places that, that my landlord has had mm. that come in. You know, there was one group that were spectacular. And yeah. then overnight, they became a nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it was, I, I, you know, I'm standing there doing the, you know, the supervisor role at one point, And I'm going, yeah. hold on a second. Weren't you the gopher guy, like, last week? And oh. now you're the boss. Yeah, literally. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Whoa. But there's an area, there's an area. You know the um, Satwa bus station and the, we we call it the big U, which is two sides of Satwa, Satwa bus station. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right, yeah, yeah is, is the streets. And one side of that, there is like 200 yards of just aluminium and glass places. Mm. And that is where these guys used to be. And um, in fact, I don't know whether they're still going because obviously we sat them off after after many times being messed about. But um, there are, I would walk down there with said um, items. And again, I probably would not arrange for a visit to my house having um, handed over money. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not going to happen. However, if you think it's a DIY job, you'll be able to get it from there without a doubt. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another look because it's, you know, it's one of these things. It's a 22 year old gate. So it's lasted 22 years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's probably do some change. And one of the things that I constantly notice with these aluminum gates is over time, the, the heating and the cooling, heating and cooling, heating and cooling, they, they just kind of get into a position where some of that hardware just gives in. And that's, that's kind of crazy. You know what? I've just accidentally... I um, noticed you were calling me. No, I know. I've got no idea why. <laughs> I don't know what button I pressed to be able to call you. People are watching. There's madness going on over here. I was just literally smashing at my yeah. phone going, I why turned, am I calling I James? I turned off my, no, my, my sound and then I've got a, you know, we've, we've got a, a Google Doc open. You've got it on yeah, your computer. Yeah. And then we communicate a lot of stuff through WhatsApp. Yeah. And suddenly I noticed you're calling me. <laughs> well, the problem, the problem was, obviously, the meeting notes that we've got yeah. are on my phone. And I should yeah. be opening via the Google Docs. But you know fully well I don't. I go straight off the that, WhatsApp. That, that's why I send it all in the WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've got me worked out. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> so I was busy just kind of looking at that, and I kind of glazed over my phone. I didn't, I didn't touch it. I'm sure I didn't. Uh, yeah. But then it wouldn't cancel the call. So for all of you people that are watching on YouTube, I sincerely apologize. But if you saw some idiot just bashing at the phone, be thankful it didn't go up against the wall because it almost got slow. Oh, man. It was one of those. Uh, you, you casually mentioned the shed. It's been a few weeks since we've had any conversations. Good. Is it done? Because you See, only had like an hour yeah. last time. No, One still, hour. I've still got that hour. And there is more of an issue now. Oh, no. Because we went on a family walk over the kind of Easter break. And we came back so that we were coming alongside the backside of the shed, which is where the final hour needs to be done. Mm. And then Natalie made the comment, oh, you haven't finished it. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, here we go. But then it's not as though the workload decreases no, as, no. As, as, yeah. as a dad. So I've just had that much stuff. And also, as you know, I'm kind of in the office a hell of a lot more than I used to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so trying to find just that hour is is proving to be quite difficult. And this uh, is, this is it's that, what, are, what do they call it, the last mile? Yes, it absolutely is. And this is that thing in DIY that it's always so important and we've talked you can go back through many of our conversations we've talked yeah. about planning we've talked about 
time allotment versus the I know exactly what I'm doing and hey, I, I have a, an idea what I'm doing and then when you get involved, you realize it's going to you know double the time, etc. Yeah. But that last finish part can be brutal. Well, there's another one which is now, it used to be that when I was very part-time at work, that I get a couple of days of non-child time. Right. To, and that is just perfect for getting all that kind of stuff yeah. done. Anyway, now almost all of my time is child time. So I try and involve them with what I'm doing, and that's kind of the final bit. It's just not really kid f- uh, friendly. Mm. So instead, if I can, uh, if we can power wash one of the quite few cars that I've got, <laughs> that tends to be the chosen activity because Ruby finds it hilarious to hit full pressure on the on, the, and then just be thrown around by the power washer. So that tends to be what we it's, do. It's better than going to a music park. Oh, they absolutely love it. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's fights over who gets to snow foam the car. In fact, so much so that for snow foam. Uh, most most people will buy a small, you know, 250 mil. I bought 20 gallons. <laughs> it seemed a better idea because they loved it that much. I didn't really want to curtail their activities. So, yeah, I've genuinely got, well, no, 20 litres, not 20 gallons, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But so, still, it's, um, it's, it's entertainment, isn't it? So, so, I need to find a slot to be able to do that. So, what's left to do if Natalie has noticed it's all it is All it is is one of the overhangs, or the overhang on the t- lower section at the back. So, this is, this is a nice constructed shed. It's wood, has that barn look. Yeah, it's kind of a, a four-piece roof. Yeah. Um, so, it does. It looks very barny. And the backside, uh, in effect, I've done I've done all of the wooden battening apart from one. Okay. But all I really need to do is to cut down um, the, uh, the 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 roof the roofing cover, uh-huh. and then just fit that one on. And then I've just got one final ceiling um, piece um, right on the crown that I need to do as well, and okay. that'll be it. But it's just finding the time right now. Which and is it's difficult. like one hour. It's like one, probably one hour of your life to get this done. Yeah, it is. And that hour is proving very, very difficult to find. <laughs> now, it, when I say an hour, it's so probably an hour or so of, of labor. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of setup. There's a yeah, little bit of... There is both sides. You're probably looking at an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, well, now that's made it even more <laughs> unlikely. And I think that's, for me, this is always the issue. It's like, yeah. you know, the wife will say, okay, you know, can you just sand this off? And it's like... Yeah, well, it's going to take me 20 minutes to get everything all out. It's going to, I'm going to have to do this, I'm going to have to do that, I'm going to get mm. set up, and then I'm going to finish, and then I'm going to have to clean up, and I'm going to have to yeah. dismantle, and we're talking two hours. I also get, I get a list of probably, <laughs> I don't know, 10 to 15 jobs in a day that needs to be done when I'm at home. 10 to 15 a day? Yeah. <laughs> a and, day? Yeah. And so that is the list of what to do. Now, I know if I include the DIY, or that, the shed work in there, uh, alongside the other DIY that I'll, I'll, I've been given as well, I know if I include that, I'm getting to like four or five. Now, on your report card, doing a third of the list does not necessarily yeah. work particularly well, even though it would be very satisfying. And I'd enjoy that bit probably a lot more than the other stuff. But it's just, I want to get down to it. You've got to get to 10, haven't you? Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, if yeah, you've got yeah. a list of 15, get down to 10. Yeah. That's the pass mark, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's proving a little bit difficult from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Any updates on the power washing of the backyard table that you were going to do? To kind Absolutely of- none, apart yeah. from we had family over this week. Oh, okay. Great. And uh, my job was not to clean the table, actually. Natalie did it. And right. she did it with, uh, with a, um, a bucket and sponge. It came okay. out really nicely. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was quite surprised. So, yeah, it will still, I, I think I will leave it till after the summer now. Um, but it is mellowing. The colour is mellowing oh, well. nice. So we were kind of a bit too two-tone previously. Yeah. And I may well still leave it for half the summer uncovered just to see if I can finish off that process because uh, it's a teak, teak table yeah. and people know you either go one or two ways. The way I went previously, which was to teak oil it on a, a yearly basis, yeah. which uh, meant that it still looked absolutely brand new seven years later and I sold it for more than I bought it. And, um, or the alternative is to, uh, to do nothing, let the colour mellow out of it because yeah. they can look quite red and Natalie yeah. didn't like that so much. But we were getting a little bit of kind of mould and, um, and bits on it and mm-hmm. then again, you know, as we mentioned, we, that could be power wash to, um, to get rid um but again uh, the thought was that we were so close to the summer season anyway yeah. although i've got yeah. to say oh, on oh, saturday oh. afternoon we had the whole family out there we went later than we normally do normally we do kind of an afternoon afternoony tea type thing yeah. you know normally it's like um three o'clock ish that we'd sit down and admittedly we were under a, a pretty good um uh, a pretty good uh, kind of uh, uh, 
what would you call that? Not a sales show. It's one of those um, retractable jobs. Oh, nice. Um, so like we're an awning. That. An awning. Awning, that's the word yeah. I couldn't get to. Thank you, James. Uh, so we're under that, but we were out for 4.30, I think, and we were absolutely fine this weekend. Oh, nice. It is unseasonably cool. It's cool, but I noticed humidity this morning. You walk the dogs. Did you notice any humidity? None at all. All right, okay. What time are you out? Well, I don't know, five. I know, I was late in you this morning. I was like 5.45. Okay. So maybe that's the difference. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, and actually, the dogs were remarkably good to, uh, today. We still have an issue of um, a Pallington, who is now 11 months, who is pulling like you wouldn't believe on the one end. And we've got Rolo that stops dead every time he wants to smell every plant and we on it. So I'm literally, <laughs> I'm literally like the man of the north. The, that's an English reference, by the way. Um, being pulled with my arms in different directions on every walk. It's just... Shocking, but today both of them seem to want to pull forwards, which is okay. distinct this improvement. Is, is I'll take that. It's all good. That was a you were asking about our vacation because yeah. we'd made it to Italy, and of course there are a lot of truffles being sold in Italy, and a lot of farmers with their pictures or truffle harvesters four or five generations with your dogs. Yes, the Gotteromiolas. Uh, yes, and I see the pictures. I'm going. It's, this is Colin's dogs. Yeah, so yeah, they are. Did are yours? Uh, have they been trained for truffle? We had that as an option. Okay, and then we found out there were no truffles apart from farm truffles in LA, Apparently, oh, oh. mind you, I heard they weren't as good as the uh, the genuine article. Which no. you kind of think about farmed ones, but yeah. also, but I like the I like the ambition. <laughs> it's, well, it's not it's not something you'd ever <laughs> knock the UAE for, is it? Ambition. But, but you can see, like you know, they got the blueberry guys here, and actually, the the homegrown blueberries are yeah, they are good, uh, aren't they? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're great. Really sweet, and you've got all sorts of lettuce and stuff being grown, and yeah. we do have local mushrooms. The hydroponics, being, isn't yeah. it? Oh, we yeah. have local mushrooms, yeah. So I can see how someone say, "Well, if you got mushrooms, why can't you have truffles?" No, it's a good point. So, so hopefully they will become world beaters soon, uh, which is the name of the game, uh, without a doubt. Nice, yeah. One of the things on the list for today is just workwear and workwear. That's when, really important, especially in our game. I mean, so you professionally speaking, you guys have uniforms, but they also have, they're, they're wearing work clothes. And, yeah. and I think there's a fine line with the DIYer like myself. I have work clothes as well. Yeah. Like I, you know, a pair of pants. I got a pair of coveralls that I put on. I got a pair of shoes, you know, steel toe that I like to wear. Yep. And I see a lot of people, though, who are out, you know, messing about doing stuff who aren't wearing work clothes. And I just kind of go. This, see, here's, I have two different points and a slightly different view on this, um, which is you've got all the PPE scenario, yeah. um, which really is a bit of a no-brainer, um, on, depending on the type of work that you're doing. But uh, glasses are, are an absolute prerequisite. Gloves are a prerequisite. And those, those things don't cost a lot. Like, no, you peanuts. get a variety of them. You know, the, the safety glasses. They, the, yeah, you know, they give four dirhams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's I got, nuts. I got half a dozen pairs. Just, yeah, you know, yeah. And the same with gloves. I go through a lot of gloves. So. Yes, me too. And obviously, different gloves are different things. Yeah, I've yeah. got everything from welding gauntlets down to woolen numbers, so depending on what you need. But for me, the best bit of workwear that we have is these T-shirts. Mm. Um, because they're wick away, and oh, they okay. really work. Which is odd, because I've also got... Um, I'm not a golfer, as you well know, but I got given a very, very expensive... Um, golfing t-shirt okay. a couple of years ago first of all it creases miles worse than me <laughs> secondly the wick effect is nowhere near yeah. as effective and thirdly they don't stay as fresh as these ones okay so and and if you imagine our guys are on a roof for a good few hours every day so we've tested it to the limits and, and they like them yeah they do because if they didn't really like good. them they'd find a way to yeah oh yeah There'll, there'll be problems, without yeah. a doubt. But we've stayed with the same supplier now for 10 okay. years. Okay. And we've moved, actually, with some of their materials as they've moved. And that's been really key. Oh. Other things for workwear, which is um, accidents do happen. So long trousers is worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, if you're not doing something that involves liquid, then jeans are actually really good. Because the whole idea of them originally was as workwear. Yeah. That's where yeah. it all started. And um, assuming they're not the the ones that are ripped in 20 different places, they do provide <laughs> decent protection from, from general stuff. I wear a pair of coveralls. I've, yeah, yeah. I've been wearing them for 20 years. And the only the downside is that wick away moisture thing doesn't yes. happen. So yeah. they can get pretty, yeah. pretty wet. No, uh, that is an issue. And especially if you're working through the summer months yeah. as well. But I find, you know, I put those on and it's just that I'm covered. Yes. And it's, I'm always amazed 
at the end of a job and it could just be sanding. It could be just doing some tree trimming. It could just be cutting some wood. Yes. How dirty you get. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Do you know, here's another classic, which is a sign of the times, which is in the past, whenever we were talking PPE, uh, we'd be talking about masks wouldn't yeah. we? and yeah. people never use masks. No, no. I don't think that's even an issue to talk about now, is it? No. It's not nuts. It is. I hadn't really thought... It's so so obvious, but I hadn't really thought about that before. Yeah. Everyone's got a mask on now. Yeah, yeah. And... I mean, it's just little things, right? It's, yes. It's, I mean, I, I, I'm actually really happy because I've got the old Wrangler outside. You saw it. You walked mm. by. No roof on it. Uh, the mask is, is a must. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and before, yeah. if you had something or... I mean, okay, here you could, you could put a balaclava on or sure. you know, put a, a, a scarf around your face and no one's really going to look two ways. Mm. But I, I drive with a mask on just because of the dust. Yes, of course. And I never used to do that because I thought, oh, they look a little odd. Yeah, so nobody, nobody reminds anymore. So that's it. for PPE. Having masks now, you know, if you're doing, especially sanding. Yes. Even if you're sanding outside, you need a mask on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I've got a really oh, good. Oh. You, um, one. Do you remember you said on the notes, "What is new?" Yeah. I am working on a really crazy job at the moment, which okay. is um, which is quite something. So this is an apartment, a three bed apartment uh-huh. in Dubai uh-huh. that was purchased for thirty million. Dirhams. Get out of here. No. 30 million dirhams. Yes. And <laughs> on top of that, it has been furnished to that level as well. Wow. To give you an idea, it's a palace. there is a rug there yeah. that was 100,000 dirhams for the rug. Get out of here. No. 100,000? People are going to walk on it? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. There is also <laughs> a, uh, we installed a um, jacuzzi there. Yeah. That is only available in Italy, mm-hmm. has no local distributor, <laughs> fits two people in it. Yeah. And that was 185,000 dirhams. But we've just had to go back because of the, an original factory defect. I mean, we don't work on these, but we did it as a favor yeah. and we solved it. But that's the level that we're working at. Gee. Okay. Now, we are doing just some additional sockets. You know, nothing dramatic. I think yeah. they've got six sockets in one area, and um, it, they've got again. They've got a front of house kitchen and a back of house kitchen. Of course. So uh, we've what got one. Of, what kind of square footage are we talking with this? I reckon. Actually, I haven't got that figure, but I reckon it's around a five thousand. I oh, know we saw that probably about four thousand square foot, a three bedroom. So, so it's not enormous. No, but that's big enough, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so we are doing so. Sockets. So the original construction, they didn't put enough sockets in. No, no, which is odd because <laughs> they did. Odd. They did all the provision right. I mean, the supply is unbelievable. Yeah. It's um, it's there's a massive income of supply. Okay, everything has been um, cabled in four mil, which is not yeah. standard. Normally, line circuits and all the rest yeah. of it, they, they they knock it down. So all the provision is there. Okay, this job really would take us about two days to do. Yeah. It's taken me two days to do the approvals with the building people, and I wow. still haven't finished it. <laughs> okay, normally yeah. we, I'd be able to do this off a visual, yeah. so just a, a quick inspection and brief to the boys, and away we go. Client has been incredible. Oh, by the way, the client has been there. He's owned it now, I think, for a couple of years. He's been there for one week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and the client is just incredible. But, um, and then the, the managing agents in the UK, so we're dealing with him as well. And literally, I could have done this job in two days. Yeah. And we are not even <laughs> able to schedule at the moment <laughs> to get the work done. Client's oh, been incredible yeah. throughout. Yeah. But it's just a, a scenario of loads of jobs worth. And also, I guess just because of the um, the fact that it is so exclusive, well, this is, they need to be totally sure about what's been done. This is this is something globally that I don't think people fully realize when it comes to doing jobs in condos, in apartment buildings, gated communities. You need a whole bunch of permissions. Oh yeah, I mean that, that we have dedicated people just to do passes and permissions. <sighs> That's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because even I, eight to ten years ago, we would never have had that. It would have been like twenty percent of one person's job. So why is it why is it changed that there's so many provisions needed? What's what's going on? Strata law. Oh, that here, yeah, that's yeah. what caused it. So as soon as everybody had managing agents, the managing yeah. agent needs to justify. That, well, actually, that's not fair. Okay, I'm going to give you two views. All right, <laughs> I'm going to give you the cynical view, and yeah. I'm going to give you um, how they 
justify it. So their point is that we need to regulate the quality of the work that is undertaken in the buildings that we manage. I get that. Okay. Yeah. The cynical view is we need to justify our management contracts and show that we actually do something. I get that as well. Okay. So the thing is, to do the, the, um, the former, you would need to have somebody of knowledge that is inspecting the work that is undertaken. Yeah. Instead, you simply have somebody who submits something, you either approve it or you reject it. Yeah. But if you reject it, you need somebody of knowledge <laughs> to give them a reason why it's being rejected. <laughs> yeah. So you approve it anyway. Yeah. That's how it, how it tends to work. So as a result, we find that it is just literally a big um, step in the way of our works. And unfortunately, customers here are, don't seem willing to take on that cost for time mm. um, that it takes. And it is massive. You know, our downtime as a result of this, we can lose like anything between half an hour and an hour on a job. That's a lot. Simply, it stood in a physical queue for the passes. And that happens at one of the huge developers in Dubai. Mm. Physically, we have to stand in a queue at their offices just off the palm. And um, we have to wait there until those passes are issued. So now, not only do I have a dedicated person in the office for passes, I have a dedicated office driver who literally stands, stands in that there. queue on behalf of the teams and then has to go and distribute them to all the teams. Wow. Can you imagine that cost? No. Well, it's, it, that sits that's alone. It's a full-time salary right there. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and also the, a full-time vehicle yeah. and with full-time insurance, <laughs> et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So, it's so a, you're, you're looking 20000 a month probably by the time you put all of it together. It's absolutely crazy. nuts. That's crazy. It really is. But that's the, that's the way it is. So you just have to roll with it, don't you? Yeah. Without a doubt. Other things on your list I absolutely and utterly love. Do you like the sprinklers? I love that sprinkler. I was thinking of your pool. Well, no, I was thinking, um, yeah, okay. No, I'll get you there. Yeah, so I've got one of those, um, uh, the sprinklers that attaches onto the jet from, from our pool. Oh. And the idea is that that, was, um, that will literally just spray out and it cools it down. Okay. It does. It, it gives us about five to seven degrees during That's the summer, nice. which is good. Yeah. But no, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking the amount of money that people pay for fountains. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's obvious that if you had an architectural or sculptured um, sprinkler yeah. like this, then you're basically killing two birds with one stone. That makes total sense to me. Yeah. But I was then, thinking of your kids too. When I saw that, I just thought, oh, this would be fine. Yeah. Oh, they'd love it. They absolutely love it. So you then think about the way that Dubai is set up and the way that irrigation systems work here. You actually have full bore pipes that come, because we have the pop-up sprinklers in the lawns, uh-huh. you need a decent um, volume of water for that. So underneath your lawns, there is full size, usually kind of one inch or three quart uh, pipe that is supplying those. Well, if you, instead of, um, it would be so easy just to shut off all the current sprinklers that, that you have there, and that you have the one outlet for this architectural one that sprayed the whole area. And the, I mean, describe this a little bit because it, it it's it's sort of on a stand. Yeah, so it's on a stand, and, and this particular one, I'm not sure I necessarily like. I like the idea more than this individual. Yeah. What I love was the material. So yeah. it's copper. Uh, that's what I thought. I right. thought. Wow. But also, the lovely thing about copper is it goes green over time, doesn't it? Yeah. So you actually get that variation that's in there. Now this one then throws in this this glass ball of differing colours <laughs> that goes in the middle. And I'm kind of like you've ruined it there. Okay, first yeah, of all, you made thing. it dangerous. In my kids are in the garden, so yeah. we're not having glass. Don't be ridiculous. And secondly, you know what? If you've got something that's like <laughs> copper and sculptured, why would you throw in coloured glass? It yeah. just seems yeah. silly. But the concept is genius. And then you've got all these little pieces coming off, and water is going everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just but, And then spinning as well, yeah. the ability to be able to spin it. <laughs> but to use that architecture, I think it would be absolutely amazing. I thought a DIY job, just to have some fun. It would be easy play to it do. Around. Yeah. yeah. A little copper you know, a little blowtorch, putting stuff together, it'd be fun. Yeah, it definitely could be. Um, the other thing just to bear in mind is when you're moving with pipe work, you obviously need to keep the bore, so you can't, yeah. you have to be careful with the way you bend it. Yeah. It's not expensive to get the benders that will no. uh, that will do all of this, and again, you can just flow it in in, um, in motion. And again, copper fittings are widely available, so that and a little bit of solder, and, um, and away you go. And actually, you know, the best solder I've ever seen in the world, and I've seen a lot of, of, uh, of plumbers in my time, is my father. Really? He's unbelievable. He literally, when um, uh, we got, what was it? He was busy doing, he was busy actually fitting up a new, um, uh, a new en suite. Uh-huh. So he decided to actually get a plumber in to help with some of the other work. Okay, and the plumber sense. came in and went, 
who was the plumber that you did on this? And that was kind of slightly sheepish. And he said, this is better work than I've seen from anybody in our area. And he was wow. worried about his own competition. <laughs> and at that point, you could just imagine my dad kind of swelling with pride. <laughs> well, actually, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> which is I brilliant it, it's a lost art with, with it the, is with the amount of plastic piping that's used exactly now. so you have speed fit which is now yeah. taken over the uk yeah. it's not here um but which speed, is weird which is weird that it's not here um no because of the expense of it if oh, you imagine because okay. our labor cost is so low the whole yeah. point of speed fit is it's quick yeah. so the parts are really expensive but your labor cost is much lower um here the kind of equivalent probably would be ppr Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you need skill to be able to use that. Um, and it's actually much better quality than the SpeedFit oh, stuff. Okay. So um, I'm a big fan of that. Um, but again, copper is here. And I know that because I've currently got two copper leaks in my, my villa. Really? I know. Copper never leaks. <laughs> and this is my third. And well, two different it, areas. Is it a, it's not a, is it at a joint or is it? No, it's really? not. It's just the pipe itself. But it's an original fit. So I pipe. wonder whether or not. Yeah. yeah, but it's done. It's done what eighteen odd years now. Still, like, I, 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 copy years normally fit and forget. Life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I had one in my master bedroom that was done about a month ago, and now I've got one oddly in the kids' playroom where we've got we didn't know we even had water, and uh, another one the in the is, kitchen. The pressure is no. no. No, pressure's absolutely bang on. There's been no issue with that. Hmm. It's just really odd, and I'm getting the feeling I'm going to get quite a lot more over the forthcoming year or so two. So maybe this pipe is just, that was a weak spot in it, mm. in the pipe construction. And it's all in it's different all, locations as well. But all the same worrying. batch of piping, I would assume. Oh, I'm sure. Absolutely certain. So I think this will be a, a, a little bit of an ongoing battle. But, you know, every property, every property <laughs> has its nuances. Yeah, that's and, the key. Um, the nuances that you as an owner or you as a, a renter get used to. Yeah. And then someone else comes over for a few days or whatever. And, oh, man, what's going on here? See, I met another person last night while I was attempting to beetle race, but we got a flat tire, which is a bit of a pain after while the you first were, session. While you were going? Oh, yeah, no, we found out where... As the um, <laughs> luckily Dave was driving, who was an incredible driver, thank God. Um, and uh, we were coming down the main straight, absolute top whack. He hit the brakes, and the, the initial brake was fine. And then he went to kind of trail brake on the turning, and the car literally just bucked. Oh, and no. we, we were both like, it never does that. It never does that. And he's like, yeah, that was really odd. Maybe the tyres weren't fully heated. We were kind of in the first session. Went to the next corner, inside wheel, suddenly lets go and starts spinning. And we're like, no, something is definitely wrong here. So we pulled off the track and yeah, we'd actually just lost, uh, at that stage, we'd only lost about four or five PSI, but we run it really in a sweet spot. So, um, but at least the tie communicated before we had a catastrophic disaster. So that was good. Anyway, the guy that I met there has moved to the marina and previously was in the ranches. And okay. he said, the reason I moved out of the ranches was I just couldn't handle all the compressor failures. Oh, And I was thinking about this, and I said to him, yeah, no, I get you, but what the reason for this is, A, there is a lifetime to a compressor, and therefore, if you have been in the properties where, uh, and especially in the earlier days, it's kind of five to seven years from original handover or or fitment, and equally, if they hadn't been serviced well, then, yeah, you're going to hit failure after failure, without a doubt. But again, if you imagine those iterations of timing, um, you're going to get to the stage where if you're unlucky, you're going to have multiples over a time frame, which is just the way it is. And mm. it's just something that you cope with and accept if you're moving into an older property. But he obviously had a complete nightmare as, um, and has moved to the marina because now he's chilled water and doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> does he like the marina? Uh, yes, he does. I mean, there's, there's places in the marina. I mean, I see the marina all the time and you go there and I kind of look and I go, well, I don't know if I want to, I mean, I'd love to live there, but I'd have to be very specific on the buildings. I think anyone that plans to drive to and from work needs to oh, yeah. definitely go there <laughs> and do that during commuter time. And you have to be a much more patient person than I am being sat yeah, in the queue. I couldn't do it. I will go four times as far to avoid a queue, yeah. without a doubt. And more often than not, I'll do some crazy off-road to try and get, get around it. Well, well look, we... We live, I live in a Murdoff way. Yeah. I've got a privily pass. I'll go down to JBR in the marina area. And that is a deterrent for me to go and visit some of these beach clubs because leaving, I'm going to have to sit in a line of traffic. And it's the weekend. It's not even the, the weekday when people are going to work. And I just yeah. go, I don't know how people do it. Well, actually, the, the, only, the only place that we really go to there is the Ritz-Carlton. Because if you imagine, okay. you've only got that one yeah. short road to get out. <laughs> and then you're on the ring road on the other yeah. side. Whereas I'm, off, I'm, easier. I'm, I'm often on the other side by the address, the ah, Hilton, yes. yeah, the yeah, Sheraton, yeah. the Doubletree. Yeah. 
and that's brutal. Yeah, but again, you, from there, you've still got that second bridge that you can cut across, and it's yeah, not so yeah. bad which on is the, what we always the roadside. Yeah, which is it? what we always do. Once you get out of the core, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you're safe. But the thing is, on one of those turn-off routes, it's two lanes that turns into one lane, and of course, everyone oh, wants to cut in near yeah. the bottom. And I'm always like, come on, people. You've done this road before. Like th- These are people who know the road, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're just gaming it. Yeah, like, there's too much of that, isn't there? Yeah. Not enough yeah. respect. Um, I've got one more before probably okay. we need to depart. The Wonders of WD-40. Well, and I loved this one because you were a lubricant guy in another in another life. I was. However, what I hate to say is that I actually got sold an urban myth about WD-40 uh-huh. that I debunked today. Okay. Have you heard the one about um, the original formulation for WD-40 included fish oil? Yes. I think you've probably heard that from me because I've been peddling that for years. Urban legend. Really? Never happened. (gasps) I know, I'm gutted. I've dinner partied that one. (laughs) Really? That's how sad my dinner parties are, James. This is the truth. Conversations dying. Okay, let's talk WD-40. Yeah, let me tell you a story. (laughs) Oh, God, who invited Colin? Um, (laughs) Who invited me? You're married to me. What are you talking about, man? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so um, what it actually is, is just really light mineral oil is the main kind of parts of it, in effect. And obviously, it has got a particular uh, formulation that just works extremely well. Now, the other thing that's fascinating is it was never designed as a lubricant. It was designed to displace water. There you go. Yeah. So it's almost like the secondary function of WD-40 is what everybody actually buys it for. Ah, so, so I use WD-40 with my juicer, and I've, I had some issues with my juicer. In fact, I... This is your 20-year-old Philips, isn't it? Yeah, uh, this is actually a Ninja. So this one's only about 10 years old. But I've got one of these nice Ninja blenders, juicer, mixer things. That's a great name, isn't it? Yeah, the Ninja. It's and it's it's like a, shall we use the Phillips or shall we use the, the nin- ninja? So they do different things. So I you know it's kind of in the juice corner of the kitchen because I've got yeah. the juicer and then I've got the blender mixer for our other things extractor. Mm. And I ran into a problem with with the the blade bottom of the ninja. Okay, and it, it it's it kind of seized. And I thought, oh come on, I got yeah, get another yeah. one of these and. And so I, you know, got in. I, I, I started to figure out what, what Is happened. Is it still under warranty? Uh, no, it was past warranty. I've told you about the 20 know, year yeah. warranty I've got on mine. Yeah. Not that I've ever used it, but there we go. So I ended up lubricating the life out of this thing and it came back to life. And I realized that there must have been something caught in mm. it. Maybe some liquid had dripped out. And yeah, but think about that. That should not be. The only way that that could really work is one of two things, which is either a physical jam. Yeah, that's what I think it was, or some plastic or something, because I did get it out eventually, and now it's been working fine. But what I use WD-40 on a regular basis is after I clean it, the part where there's this axle underneath yeah. that's got a, a set of bearings, I like to spray some WD-40 in exactly for the reason that you're talking about, is to get out any moisture that's yes. in there, to get out any water. yeah. Um, the thing is with WD-40, because it is so light, uh-huh. trying to keep it in doing its lubrication job is actually quite difficult. Yeah, that is that. That is yeah. the problem. So trying to find something a little bit heavier. Now, as you said, I am the ex-lubrication um, <laughs> guy. That, do you know what? That sounds it's extremely a, wrong. It seems very yes. <laughs> Gee whiz. I haven't really got that far. Now, this is traditionally where the difference with three-in-one oil is. Ah. Okay, where you have the options of that too, because it is a heavier blend. That's kind of like your sewing machine oil. Uh, yeah, mm, uh. No, sewing machine oil is normally quite light oh, as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, three and one was the traditional one that came in the can, yeah, so you yeah. didn't have the propellant yeah. that came in the can. Obviously, they've got propellant versions now, um, but equally, it leaves residue behind, which is where the cleanup for WD is a lot cleaner than it is for W uh, than for three and one oil and that kind of thing. Mm. My version was Rustola. 
and Rustola. Which is just kind of like a WD, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like a WD, but again, you know I've been going on about graphite oil for yeah, absolutely yeah. years. Well, it had graphite oil in it. Uh-huh. So the negative was um, it looks slightly grey when, um, okay. uh, when you put it in there. The positive was, my word, did it work. And it was <laughs> a lot better than WD-40 ever did. So I was hugely proud of it. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I think I killed it. And we've had that in a previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> I changed the size of the packaging, which I didn't realise the implications of. But that's another story. We all have our bad days. <laughs> and that was mine. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, if you can just hold it for a yeah, second. Yeah, I I'm going to quickly just type in Rustola and find out whether I did kill it. So uh, what, what was interesting and where you got this from is I put a link up of things you can use WD-44. And I was looking at, you know, cleaning off bugs on the front of your car. I thought, okay, I've done that. Uh, getting gum off of your shoes. I've never tried that, but what a great idea. Off the sole of your shoe. I am over the moon to tell you that Holtz Rustola is still for sale for four ninety nine at Allen Quinn Limited in the UK. There we go. So Which is unbelievable. So it lives. So I'm actually just going to quickly see if I've got the images of the catastrophe that was the version that I did on the internet. And um, maybe it's, it's basically been pulled out of circulation. Or maybe it's been used in universities around the world <laughs> to demonstrate what happens... When you basically de-skill your workforce <laughs> and give give a newbie some massive projects, so, and um, and it goes a bit wrong. So here's oh, one of there, one no, of the other things God. you can do with, and I, I this is one I I wasn't I, I had some issues with, and I haven't tried it. The jewelry that is all knotted up. Yeah, see that is that's no that's a step beyond. And I'm thinking, isn't it? Hold on a second. I, I, only thing that I can think of is by spraying wd onto it it helps everything move around a little bit better so that you can unknot it i think that's the idea isn't it so it's trying to basically get that knot what you're trying to do is to be able to break into it yeah but do you think natalie's going to let you spray your jewelry with wd-40 i I think she'd be too worried about if i ever got near jewelry i'd probably try and sell it (laughs) so that'd be kept way way out of the way no i think that's utter insanity yeah but then again some of the other things some of them are very clever like the idea of using it to get rid of chewing gum yeah i thought that on shoes is a really good one yeah yeah the not so clever i think is to repel insects on the front of your car i i wonder well the whole of the front of the car is going to be sticky what are you on about no no that's utter madness (laughs) we're not doing that so that one is a definite no, without a doubt. What else have we got here? Removes gum. We've already done that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, untangled jewelry. We've done that. That sounds legitimate. Remove surface stains. Right. So this is talking about things like uh, crayon yeah. and you uh, tried pen. That? Well, no, I haven't because I'm sure it would remove those surface stains. It would leave its own to replace them. <laughs> so I'm kind of more interested in Gugon for that. Have you oh, used Gugon? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's just yeah, that's just amazing. Yeah. So this is orange based, yeah. believe it or not, unless that's a a myth as well it's probably got fish oil in it as well isn't it fish oil. that's what it's got in there <laughs> and um gugon is absolutely incredible i haven't found oh actually that's not true i found one thing that you couldn't do but i can't remember what it was but um so i would prefer to use gugon for that rather than uh wd de-icer for locks i don't know about that maybe no no that makes sense yeah. that makes sense because if you imagine um a lock that's been iced then the reason that normally that it's iced up is there is water within that lock. So if at the same time it's got a, um, a, a, a it's able okay. to, yeah, yeah, to, okay. to melt it, then it it should be able to be displace it clean as up, well. Sp- clean up sp- paint splatter on your tiles and stuff? I've heard about that, yes. You never tried it though? I've never tried, no, because I'd always go mechanical on that yeah. um, to get that off, because if you imagine that would work a lot better. Soften leather, that's garbage, without a doubt. <laughs> okay, It will soften leather initially. The problem is, over time, uh, it will dry out. It's there as a water displacer, so therefore it is, in effect, uh, the softening or the, the softening function of leather. Think about a chamois leather. When a chamois leather is completely utterly dry, it's like cardboard. Yeah. You then put it in water yeah, yeah. to basically loosen it off again. In effect, what normal leather is, is it just has that suppleness that yeah, comes yeah. from uh, some some form of water. Yeah. You put a water displacer in there, <laughs> over time, <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. What, what about the plastic chairs that have gotten weather beaten, and you spray the WD on, and it's going to help to clean them up? Uh, it's, a, it's temporary. Um, secondly, enjoy that all over your clothes. <laughs> Can you imagine someone sits down, and yeah. they got oil all over them? Yeah, white jeans, perfect. <laughs> 
also, if you imagine the colour that that would look at as well, there'd be suggestions it was a, a, an issue of a different kind. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll leave that one to the imagination. I think there's a few of these that were also stretching a little bit. Yeah, some of them are a bit stretchy, you know, but Soil at the same remover. time. I just use water to get the dirt off my shovels and stuff, but you could use WD-40. Yeah, but they always, with these lists, don't you find, James, that they always assume that you've got utterly nothing in your life apart from the item that they're going on about. Yeah. Which is just quite, quite something. But, you know, WD-40 yeah. is exceptional at what it does and probably the difference between it and all of the other competing products is that breadth and that i guess is the 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 core element of what this this article is trying to tell us and whoever decided to create a two-in-one nozzle where the straw is built in and you can slide it down so you can get a nice spray that person deserves a medal. I absolutely agree. That was the biggest problem that I had with you. Always lose that little straw. Always, yeah, and now the new tin, and that's that's only been going for about a year. But the new tin's brilliant. I was trying to plug the straw in because I've still got a, a little old one, and I was plugging the straw, and it starts spraying everywhere. Yeah, like, that was a normal problem. Getting covered in yeah, yeah. WD forty. It's like all over your white smell? jeans. Yeah, what's, what's that smell? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, that's normal. <laughs> Mind you, that's the same problem with, uh, with a spray can. Whenever you, you the yeah. second time you go to a spray can, you're like, oh, God, this thing doesn't work. And you try and get the pin in, and you don't really think about the fact that now the actual spray pan's going to be completely destroyed. Next thing you know, your face is totally purple. Yeah. On that note, it's been another wonderful conversation with Colin Thomas from Essential Maintenance and We Will Fix It Dubai. It's the We Will Fix It podcast. Colin, thank you very much. 